Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazaeus from The Automator. And the other day, a Hero Group call, we were talking about monitoring what you've been working on. And uh, a Hero member, Ryan Wells, had mentioned he had a version of a script that he had done some stuff with. Now we took it, but what we wanted to do in this video was one, show you how it works, but two is convert it to version two because everything that we're doing is in version two. This is in version one of AutoHotKey. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. And we will see how easy it is to go between the two and how dif different they are not <laughs> because most of the things in here probably will not change too much so let me share my screen real quick and what i got here is the original script that he created and as you can see it's less than 100 lines long so it's not like a crazy long thing when when you start it it just goes ahead and sets a timer every one second, check some things for the for the title that you're looking at, and every time it checks, um, if the title is different than the previous title, then it just appends into a file the information about the previous thing. What is it? A time string, how many seconds you were on that, uh, on that program, and what is the program title? That's it. Everything else, when, once you finish, that you exit the app, it's just going to show a little bit of our report. You will see that in a second. So what we're going to do is just let me show you the program. At, at first, it just goes ahead and runs on the background. I know that it's running because here you can see that the, the thing is running and I could definitely just check on my switch monitor. I just ran it through VS Code. But I also noticed that automatically this file appeared on my left, which is the file that we said um, to save. So right now it is counting. Now this is called a switch monitor. Now I'm gonna switch to the other file. And now you will see that I get some information about switch monitor. So the information recorded is the previous window only, right? Now uh, it, tell, it told me this is in seconds. So I have been 13 seconds on that thing. Now, if I switch to another app, say for example, this one, now, where I was, which is the context switch, tells me that I was 18 seconds on that one. So that's how the program works. It's very simple. It's just keeping track of which window I'm on and for how long, no biggie, right? So even if I stay two seconds on the settings, it just counts it. Now, um, for now, even though this looks interesting, what I want to do, what I'm gonna show is that Sometimes I might come back to the same window several times, right? So in the end, after I exit the program, I want to get kind of like the, <laughs> the aggregate or the sum of how many seconds I spent in a particular app. So that's where we went ahead and added this little aggregate function. Just goes ahead on each line and creates the sum and then just shows a message box about it. So let's just go ahead and exit the script. Let's see what it says. Exit. There you go. So it tells me 35 seconds total on this VS Studio file. This is a specific file, 31 for the other one. The other hotkey toolkit, 30 seconds. The settings, two seconds. And task switching, one second. That was when I hit Alt tab, right? So that it, it, it also counts that. I didn't know that one. But there you go. So you get a, a simple uh, report. And that's good. You're good to go. Yeah, so you could, could yeah. you could take that text file, the log, and go copy it and paste it or open it in Excel and do a pivot table or something and calculate it. But we're like, why not just yeah. do a quick <laughs> report, right? Like it gives exactly. us on it. Exactly. Now I just noticed that I uh, did something wrong. You see here on the on exit, uh, when I say that the script should exit on aggregate but I'm just returning. So the script was not exiting. So let's go ahead Colors, and do an exit yeah. app. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's do an exit app here uh, instead of a return. So that way the app actually exits. That's good. So what we are going to do, let's go ahead and convert this to V2. There's a few things up here that you don't need to worry about any longer. So first of all, you don't need the no end. You don't need the warnings. You don't need the send input and you don't need the set working script because all of those are defaults now. So you don't have to worry about them. 
The second one here is persistent. Persistent is no longer a, um, uh, it's not a directive, it's basically a command because now you can make the script persistent or not based on certain conditions. So you have a little bit more control with directives, you didn't have that. So the cool thing about Arhaki V2 is that here you have, or it might look in a different place on your editor. I have it on the right side because it's a little bit easier to see a list, but there's a list of problems that the lexer might encounter. So whenever I want to convert a V1 to V2 script, I just switch the language to v, to AutoHotKey V2 and I will see it go red everywhere. And those are the potential problems. And here on the right, I have the total problems. And as again, as I mentioned, that's the reason why I put it on the right side. It's better looking at it as a list than actually here at the bottom one by one, right? So now here's the thing. It says unexpected persistent. Basically, as I mentioned, this is basically a command now. I don't think we need persistence here because as this has a timer, whenever the script has a timer, it is persistent automatically. So you don't need that. What he's complaining about, and you will see it very often here, is the commas. You cannot use the first comma here any longer. So I haven't used those in my programs in V1 for a long time, but now they are truly not needed. You cannot use them. They're actually going to, the, the program is going to complain about them. And basically, that's most of the programs, uh, most of the issues. Now we're just having a few issues to work with. So let me see. Uh, we have a sort here. That's it. Now, now that we're there, the last thing that we have to work on is the format time. On V1, you had these uh, commands that took an output variable in there. You don't need to do that any longer. You just use your variable as you would call any function because that's what you're calling. You're actually calling a function. Now, you notice that I'm passing this, which was a string before. Now I'm passing it here with quotation marks because it's a function call and whatever comes in goes back. The funny thing about this one is that if you don't pass the formatting like this, it defaults to that. So that's the default formatting. I can just say format time and I will get my time string. And if I don't pass a time frame, it takes it from the A now variable as well. So easier for me. And I'm just missing a uh, colon here. Well, here's the problem. Message box now is a function, right? So anything that is literal text goes um, in literal quotation marks. That's the first thing. Second of all, the parameters are switched. The first, so what is the most important things that the message box does? It shows a message. So let's show the message first. What is the second thing about the message? Well, the title, let's make the title. And what is the thing that you change the least? The options. So the options go at the end. So. If you do that, now the better thing here is, oh, look at that. What does that even mean? Do you know? Nobody knows. Well, I'm going to tell you what it means in V2. You can say that you want a yes or no button. That's what it does. So now, um, once you do that, here's the problem. You see this command called if message box yes. You don't need to do that anymore because the message box command returns the yes or no into a variable. But to do that, you have to use it as a uh, function call, right? And now you can say the normal if, you, you use an if statement, if message box equals whatever you're expecting, if it is equals to yes, then delete this thing. Now. We are halfway done. The easy changes were done. Now there's a few others that are tricky because this is valid out of hotkey V1 and V2 code. The only thing is that they mean totally different things. So file delete and, and all the commands that you're using expect an expression right next to it. 
So as they always expect expressions, if you're referring to a variable, you don't have to use the percent signs. If you do use the percent signs, it means something else. So you have to be careful with that. And that's what I'm going to be looking for now. Here we have some file appends. Okay, so yeah, I don't want that there. Let me double check something about file append. Yeah, the text, the file path. And now we don't have to specify to save it in UTF-8, which is something that you were referring to uh, several times, that in V1, you have to, on the file append, use the UTF-8 uh, string. I think, I'm not really sure how it works, but UTF-8, um, V2 is Unicode by default. You don't have to specify Unicode. So, But the problem is, I think you, Windows default to UTF-16. That's what it defaults to. So if you want UTF-8, I, I think you still have to say it, but I don't think that's an issue in general. Let's just keep it without it and see how it gets saved. That's it. So now that we did that, let me double check if there's any others here. There, There's variable names there that shouldn't be there. Let me just loop, read. Yeah, exactly. At this point, we don't need that comma there. And there we go. So most of it is looking good, except for the fact that now what are labels, they shouldn't be labels any longer. What we do is that we call functions. And labels are basically used for uh, the exit. Do you see this exit thing? It might be a label, but I think if it is a label, I have to put the quotation marks around it. I'm not really sure about it. We'll see how that goes. Let me see. Let me take a look at the documentation on that one. If it is a label, if you're calling a label, it is a function object. And what else? It cannot be even a label. You cannot use a label for this either. It has to be a function. So yeah, let go of labels. If you're very used to it, yeah, you will not like it. But in general, everything, I, I wouldn't use labels for almost nothing. Now, as we're switching these two labels to functions, then we have to be careful about the way how he created the code. I will show you in a second. So we have the active window here. All my code goes there. And at this point, I don't need a return because the brackets act as a return here. Now, we're almost done. So what happens is there's a few variables up here that he was marking them a, as global up here, which was not really necessary in V1 either because um, they were, there were something. labels, right? There were labels. And if you have labels, they are all global by default. But now that I see this, I have to make sure that in my function that they're working fine. The other thing is I still have some variables here that are used inside the function. Let's just remove this. The only one that I think I want to make global is file path because I use it out here and I also use it in my function down here. Am I writing to that variable? No, I'm not assigning any information to that variable. So if I define it global as it is right now, I can read it here without issues. So that's inside my function. Good. We're almost done here. The time frame here. So what happens is now I want to make sure of a few things. You cannot use a variable that you haven't defined somewhere. So that's the first thing. I want this variable to be static because every time I call the function, I don't want to lose the information about that variable. I want to keep that one. So I want to make it static and I want to make it zero because I'm going to be adding up one plus one every second. So it has to be numeric before I do this. That's good. Current title is something that I don't care. I want to grab the current title, but previous title is something that I cannot lose. If you finish up the function, that variable is going to be blank. No, I want to keep that one as static as well. So static, that's it. And it could start blank, doesn't matter. So now we have the current time, 
What is the current time for? What is that used for? Hmm. Seems to me that he was not using that. That's it. Oh. Initially, didn't we have the first column having a timestamp? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a timestamp there. Yeah, that's right. But that's it. So I think now this is my preference. I like having it like this because it's a little bit farther away. And then I separate things into unit group units of logical things that I'm doing. So if I'm setting variables, then I put them all together. If I am, uh, you know, creating that string, I put everything that has to do with that string together. Those kind of things. So that is easier for me to read, but that's optional. But now I think we're done with this. Let's see how many errors I get. Let me check on this one, though, because this one is different. We have the data object. Yeah, objects work a little bit differently in V2, so be careful with them. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look. String split works the same. This is part of what I mentioned. You do not have the has key anymore. It is has. You do not have that. It's just has. Line three, it does that. Report, title it's time fun. in data. Now, yeah. yeah, I'm going to get a problem here because these type of objects cannot be looped this way. I usually default to then using a map. It's a little bit easier for me to work with it. That way, I don't have to change anything on the code down here. I just switch whatever they do, and whatever I'm doing is going to work just fine. And now that I have everything, if there's no title continue, I add my stuff and then we just message box. Here's the other problem. There you go. And the exit app is a, this is here. So remember everything to the right is an expression. So this sort here might, I have, I might be using it wrong. Right. Yeah, I am. So the options is this guy, and that is text. So it has to be quoted. And this function now returns the sorted string. It's not like before. That it's no it longer did. destructive. Right, it's no longer destructive. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> it's no longer destructive because you're going to save a copy of it. So the... Now I am destroying it because I don't care. Yeah, yeah. But that's your that's, choice. That's yeah. my choice. Exactly. Yeah. It's not that I had no choice. And right. why do I have to destroy anything if I can just go ahead and make it right. terrible, right? Right. So that's it. I think now we are done. Let's test this out. The good thing about this is that if you have any issues with your code, you will be reminded very quickly. <laughs> that's for sure. So with better error reporting as well. Right. There you go. And this is the interesting thing. There is a variable here that has never been assigned ever a value. Well, I forgot the win get title is again one of those that return the thing into a variable, not you don't pass it as uh, as in v1. So that's a common theme that you're gonna see. Whenever you're getting something out of a function, it will be a function call. You don't need that. And this is text now because it's a function. So you get the title of the active window and put it in your. So good. What else? Okay. The callback function. This is a very interesting error that many people might get really confused about it. Callback functions usually receive parameters. Okay. When you define your function, you have to receive those parameters. This takes two things. I think is the error object so that you can work with the error and a status, I think it is. Those are two parameters, but I don't care about them at all. So I'm going to put a start there. And that should fix the error right there. There you go. Now the script is running. And I know that it is because I got my message box asking me if I wanted to delete the previous log, which I'm going to say yes. It seems to be running. I got my file on the right side. There we go. Now notice how this time is formatted in a different way. It, I think it got um, default format for Windows. So if I don't specify the, um, I thought I remember, there's another place. If you don't specify the 
formatting, it would just default to your locale, right? But I thought, hold on. Didn't we comment that out? Or we removed no. it? No, no, no. one where he was setting the default format, I thought. Right, yeah, he was. But I thought that now the thing are defaulted to that, but it seems to me that it doesn't. It defaults to the Windows locale. Maybe I was misremembering something, right? So that's okay. Now I go back, I delete the previous log. Let's wait for it. And now when I look at it, ah, oh, come on. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, because this is case sensitive. This is lowercase. This is that's lowercase. The time stuff that's available on Hockey is amazing. It's just, boy, you really got to pay attention to it. Right. And that's something that I have to take. Let me check on format time, it would tell me what the default is. And I just copy it there. Right. And these are the strings. So yeah, the year is lowercase. The month is uppercase. The day is lowercase. Day is lowercase. I did it. Yeah. The format. Yeah. 24 hours. So I don't need the number 24. That's what's going on there. Now minutes is M, which I could like two minutes, seconds, we got it. Yeah, that's it. And then you have the AM, PM, I don't need that. Hours, minutes, seconds, cool. Let's go ahead and try that again. I yep. think you could argue though with our approach since we're already aggregating the data, we yeah. probably would lose this first column anyway, right? Like it's- Oh, right, yeah, that's true. It was used to to aggregate, but right. we take care of that. Yes, we, we were. Now now we have the seconds being tracked. Um, we have, so the thing is working fine. Let's go ahead and exit the app and see what happens. Yeah, we got 17 seconds for one, four seconds for the other, two seconds for the other. And the one that is blank, which is when you start the, pro the program the first time, I'm just ignoring it. So everything is working as it was. Notice how the code does not look that different from before. And not only that, I removed a lot of things from the code that I didn't need. Now the code is shorter and I could make it shorter if I really get into it. But basically with the ones that you do have to have a little bit more carries with the data, uh, sorry, the maps instead of objects and those functions that now return stuff instead of actually using the same variable that you give it to go back. So I was gonna say, yeah. thanks, yeah. thankfully for years, I've always preferred using 1% to, to force an expression, yeah. right? So I'm not gonna see it, but what might be a cool regular expression to have is to look for words that have percents on both sides and jump through yes. those because those right. are often ones you're gonna have to be like, oh crap. Like I, I totally got your point how auto hockey is not gonna say that's a problem because it's like, oh, you want a dynamic thing that okay, right. yeah, exactly. That. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's basically the thing. So if I put it here, right, it's not gonna tell me anything about a problem. You see here on the right side, I don't get any problems. And I would get any problems if there were some. So right away it tells me, hey, you unexpected something here. But with the percent signs, it doesn't because that is valid code. It just doesn't mean what, what you we think, think it does. Yeah. Right, exactly. So just be careful with those. Um, but again, as you saw, the bulk of the program does not look that different from what you're used to. It's basically the same thing. The concepts behind it is what changed a little bit. Everything is an expression. Just make sure that you know that and put your quotation marks where you're supposed to. And that some functions now return the things behind or things like the objects. Those kind of little details are the ones that are tricky. Once you get the oh. hang of it, like, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. So we'll, I'll put a URL up where you can download this script. Uh, we'll try to remember to have it both in V1 and V2, depending yeah. on which one you're using. If you're interested in learning V2, uh, actually even V1 for that matter, we have intro to auto hotkey in both V1 and in V2. And then we have a really great course if you're very familiar, well, if you're somewhat familiar with auto hotkey, we have a course to help you transition from V1 to V2, which is uh, a much shorter than the intro course, but it really points out these little gotchas. 
So they're they're all on sale. All we, so you can go to the links on the page here and uh, check them out. Oh, if you learned something, like the video, it really helps us out. We get a lot more views and people like our videos. And um, thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>